you're going to have to put some effort into your life. And you need to be motivated to do that. What are the potential sources of motivation? You know, if you're extroverted, you want friends. If you're agreeable, you want an intimate relationship. If you're disagreeable, you want to win competitions. If you're open, you want to engage in creative activity. If you're high in neuroticism, you want security. Those are all sources of potential motivation that you could draw on, that you could tailor to your own personality. But then there are dimensions that you want to consider your life across. And so if you could have your life the way you wanted it in three to five years, if you were taking care of yourself properly, what would you want from your friendships? What would you want from your intimate relationship? How would you like to structure your family? What do you want for your career? Well, how are you going to use your time outside of your job? And how are you going to regulate your mental and physical health and maybe also your drug and alcohol use? Because that's a good place to auger down because alcohol wipes out five to 10% of people. So you want to keep that under control. So maybe you develop a vision of what you would like your life to be. Once the goal is established, then you break down the goal into micro processes that you can implement. The micro processes become rewarding in relation to their causal association with the goal. And that tangles in your, your incentive reward system. And that's the thing that keeps you moving forward. It produces positive emotion when it can see you moving towards a valued goal. What's the implication of that? Better have a valued goal because otherwise you can't get any positive motivation working out. And so the more valuable the goal, in principle, the more the micro processes associated with that goal start to take on a positive charge. And so what that means is, well, you get up in the morning and you're excited about the day, you're ready to go. And so as far as I can tell, what you do is you specify your long-term ideal. Maybe you also specify a place you want to stay the hell away from so that you're terrified to fail as well as excited about succeeding, because that's also useful. You want to specify goals that make you say, oh, if that could happen as a consequence of my efforts, it would clearly be worthwhile. Because the question always is, why do something? Because doing nothing is easy. You just sit there and you don't do anything. That's real easy. The question is, why would you ever do anything? And the answer to that has to be because you've determined by some means that it's worthwhile. And then the next question might be, well, where should you look for worthwhile things? And one would be, well, you could consult your own temperament. And the other would be, well, you kind of look at what it is that's valuable across the lifespan. You need a family, you need friends. Like you don't need to have all these things, but you better have most of them. Family, friends, career, educational goals, plans for, you know, time outside of work, uh, attention to your mental and physical health, etc. That's what life is about. And if you don't have any of those things, well, then all you've got left is misery and suffering. So that's a bad deal. But once you set up that goal structure, and that's really who it is that you're trying to be, and you aim at that, and then you use everything you learn as a means of building that person that you want to be. And I really mean want to be. I don't mean should be, even those things are going to overlap and specify your damn goals because how are you going to hit something if you don't know what it is that isn't going to happen and often people won't specify their goals too because they don't like to specify conditions for failure so if you keep yourself all vague and foggy which is real easy because that's just a matter of not doing as well then you don't know when you fail and people might say well i really don't want to know when i fail because that's painful so i'll, I'll keep myself blind about when i fail that's fine except you'll fail all the time then you just won't know it until you've failed so badly that you're done. And that can easily happen by the time you're 40. I would recommend that you don't let that happen. So that's willful blindness, right? You could have known, but you chose not to. Okay, so once you get your goal structure set up, you think, okay, if I could have this life, it looks like that might be worth living, despite the fact that it's gonna be anxiety provoking and threatening, and there's gonna be some suffering and loss involved and all of that, obviously. The goal is to have a vision for your life such that all things considered, that justifies your effort. Then you turn down to the micro routines. It's like, okay, well, this is what I'm aiming for. How does that instantiate itself day to day, week to week, month to month? And that's where something like a schedule can be unbelievably useful. Google Calendar. It's like, make a damn schedule and stick to it. Okay, so what's the rule with the schedule? It's not a bloody prison. Well, what kind of schedule are you setting up? I have to do this, then I have to do this, then I have to do this. You know, and then I just go play video games because who wants to do all these things that I have to do? It's like wrong. Set the damn schedule up so that you have the day you want. That's the trick. It's like, okay, I've got tomorrow. If I was going to set it up so it was the best possible day I could have, practically speaking, what would it look like? 
Well, then you schedule that. And obviously, there's a bit of responsibility that's going to go along with that, because if you have any sense, one of the things that you're going to insist upon is that at the end of the day, you're not in worse shape than you were at the beginning of the day. If you have a bunch of those in a row, sorry, that's just not a good strategy. It's a bad strategy. So maybe 20% of your day has to be responsibility and obligation, or maybe it's more than that, depending on how far behind you are. But even that, you can, you can ask yourself, okay, well, I've got these responsibilities. I have to schedule the damn things in. What's the right ratio of responsibility to reward? And you can ask yourself that, just like you'd negotiate with someone who is working for you. It's like, okay, you gotta work tomorrow. And you might say, okay, well, what are you gonna do for me that makes it likely that I'll work for you? Well, you could ask yourself that. So maybe you do an hour of responsibility and then you play a video game for 15 minutes. I don't know, whatever turns your crank, man. But, you know, you have to negotiate with yourself and not tyrannize yourself. Like you're negotiating with someone that you care for, that you would like to be productive and have a good life. And that's how you make the schedule. And then you look at the day and you think, well, if I had that day, that'd be good. You'll probably only hit it with about 70% accuracy, but that beats the hell out of zero. Right? And if you hit it even with 50% accuracy, another rule is, well, aim for 51% the next week or 50.5% because you're going to hit that position where things start to loop back positively and spiral you upward. So that's one way that you can work on your conscientiousness is plan a life you'd like to have. Having a little conversation with yourself. You have to understand that you're not your own servant, so to speak. You're someone that you have to negotiate with and you're someone that you want to present the opportunity of having a good life too. And that's hard for people because they don't like themselves very much. So, you know, they're always like cracking the whip and then procrastinating. I and mean, you know what that's like because you probably waste like six hours a day. Your time's probably worth 50 bucks an hour. I mean, you're not getting paid that now, but you're young. And so this is investment time. And what you do now is going to multiply its effects in the future. So let's say it's 50 bucks an hour, which is perfectly reasonable. So if you waste six hours a day and you are, then you're wasting about $2,000 a week or about $100,000 a year. So like, go ahead, but that's what it's costing you every hour. And you need to know what your damn time is worth. When you spend an hour was that, well, what if I paid someone 50 bucks to have had that hour? And if the answer is no, it's like, well, maybe you should do something else with your time. And it depends on whether or not you think that your time's worthwhile. But the funny thing about not assuming that is if you assume your time isn't worthwhile, what happens is you don't just sit around sort of randomly in a state of responsibility-less bliss. What you do is you suffer existentially. As far as I can tell, that's how you can improve your conscientiousness. Outline a goal that you actually would like to hit. And even better, here's something else you can think about when you're negotiating in your life. You want to negotiate with your boss for a new salary, you might think, okay, I've got this damn job. How much would I have to be paid so I'd be so bloody excited to go to work I could hardly stand it? Well, you could at least know what that number is. And then you could go there and say, well, look, you know, you like to have me around. I've been doing some thinking. I think if you paid me this amount of money, I'd be so thrilled to go to work that you could hardly even keep me away from here. And your boss might think, well, I'd actually really like to have someone around who'd be so thrilled to work that I can't get rid of them. Well, I can't give you all of that. I'll give you 75%. Maybe we can renegotiate it in a year. We plan all the time, and we're going to think about that strategically.